Hello students. In this video, we will complete the remaining part of chapter 1, Nutrition in Plant. Our today's learning objectives are some other modes of nutrition in plants and how the nutrients are replenished in the soil again. So, first we start our first topic that is some other modes of nutrition. As you know that in plants, mostly autotropic mode of nutrition is found that means they can prepare their food themselves but still there are some plants which are not green in color due to absence of chlorophyll such plants show some different modes of nutrition these are parasitic mode of nutrition and saprophytic mode of nutrition in parasitic mode of nutrition plants are not green in color so they cannot prepare their food in their body but for getting the nutrient, they are dependent on some other plants. These other plants on which these parasitic plants are dependent are known as host plant. And uh, <coughs> parasitic plants will absorb the nutrients from the body of other plants with the help of with the help of some special structures known as sucking roots or hostorium. Hostorium is a special structure, hook-like structure, which they will penetrate in the body of host plant and absorb nutrient from its body. One of the example of such a parasitic plant is cascuta or doder. In Hindi, we call it amar bag. It is a yellow thread-like structure, tubular structure, which when twining around the other plants it will climb upon the other plants and then it will grow and spread for all over the tree or any other plant this amar bell or cascuta will absorb the nutrients from the body of that host plant some other parasitic examples are also available these are mistletoe reflexia etc now the second mode of nutrition which is found in plants that is saprophytic saprophytes saprophytes are such organism or plants which obtain their food from dead and decaying matter so these are the plants uh, which are not green in color most popular example of saprophytes is fungi there are so many fungi which you also see in our day to day life for example in rainy season when you go in the garden or any rotten wood or in such areas where warmth and moisture both are available some umbrella like small fluffy structures you may observe these are white in color these are known as mushrooms it is a type of fungus and which grow in such areas where warmth and moisture both are available another example is yeast which is used in bakeries to make the cakes or pastries fluffy so here these yeast, mushrooms and many other are the examples of fungi which are not green in color. How they obtain their food? They will first secrete some digestive juice on the dead and decaying matter and make a solution of it and after that they will absorb it. In this manner they obtain their nutrients from the body of other um, such dead and decaying matter now uh, if uh, you are having a uh, bread slice and you have not used it and you have kept it in a moist place after two or three days you may observe some white fluffy patches on it you can do also it as an activity you have to take a bread slice and uh, you will soak it in water and you will keep it for two to three days you, you will observe some white fluffy growth on it and uh, this white fluffy growth uh, um, uh, after one uh, or two days it will turn into greenish and finally into black color. These patches are of a fungus which is known as bread mold and uh, initially it is white in color later on it will turn to green to black color. These uh, fungus are actually is a type of uh, thin thread like structure on and the top of these threads a uh, round structure is found that is known as sporangium. In each sporangium, many, many powder-like structures are um, produced and these are known as spores. 
when these sporangia will be rapid will be matured they will burst and these spores will spread in in the atmosphere and from where these spores will go away to all other parts uh, all other places and when they will get the suitable conditions of moisture and warmth they will start growing there on any dead and decayed matter you um, you have also observed this fungus on uh, uh, some uh, other food edible food items uh, any uh, any decaying uh, fruits vegetables or bread chapati etc and sometimes on uh, pickles curd also so the these spores uh, will spread in or uh, in all places and wherever they will get the suitable condition they will start growing there so these 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 are the saprophytes now uh, our, these uh, fungi are not uh, always harmful for us sometimes they are also useful so we have both effect of fungi harmful and useful harmful effects are like this uh, uh, fungi will spoil the food items or edible food uh, edible things and uh, some, sometimes they cause the diseases in humans in animals and uh, even also in plants so, and uh, third thing uh, they 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 can uh, make uh, anything uh, as a waste also now the useful on another side the fungi are also useful um, for from uh, some uh, fungus uh, antibiotics are obtained for example penicillin is obtained from a uh, uh, fungus known as penicillium and uh, uh, in uh, bakeries uh, the yeast is used so, and mushroom is also uh, uh, also eaten as a food so fungus has more type of effects useful and harmful effects now these were the uh, mode of nutrition of plants which were of non green plants but still there are some other plants which are though green in color they are able to perform the process of photosynthesis still they show the heterotrophic mode of nutrition um uh, for example insectivorous plants insectivorous plants uh, uh, have green leaves and uh, so the process of photosynthesis but still they are lacking some nutrients especially nitrogen to fulfill uh, the requirement of uh, that nutrient they will uh, attain the nutrients from the body of insects and they will digest these insects they will uh, secrete some digestive juices on the insect and after that they will absorb the nutrients from the body of uh, that insect and the remaining part will be expelled out um, there are so many insectivorous plants for example pitcher plant sundew venus flytrap etc in pitcher plant the tip of the leaf is converted into pitcher like structure and uh, its uh, end will convert into leaf like structure when any insect and inside that picture some hair like structures are found when any insect will uh, sit on that picture and uh, it will immediately will be uh, will be trapped inside the hair like structure of the picture and it will be dragged inside the picture after that uh, this picture will Uh, secrete some digestive juices on it it will be digested there and and uh, the wall of the picture will absorb the nutrients from the insect and at that time the lid is closed so that insect will not be able to go out till it has become dead and uh, after that the picture will uh, uh, throw the insect uh, out after absorbing the nutrients in this manner insectivorous plants obtain their nutrients from the body of the insects now another mode of nutrition which is found in plants is a symbiotic mode of nutrition symbiosis symbiosis is actually mutual cooperation where both partners are get benefited by each other in this symbiotic mode of nutrition uh, you may um, take the example of lichens where one partner is uh, showing autotrophic mode of nutrition that is alga and another partner which is showing heterotrophic mode of nutrition that is a fungus and when both they will combine together they are known as lichens here the fungus will provide the raw materials it will absorb water and minerals 
from uh, the outer environment and uh, it will provide these nutrients to the uh, alga in the an alga is autotrophic it will prepare the food by these raw materials in this manner both are get benefited another example of symbiotic relationship which you are um, seeing is in uh, leguminous plants leguminous means the plants of pulses are known as leguminous plants and as i have uh, discuss it uh, with you in the previous video that uh, leguminous um, plants uh, have some root nodules in their root some nodules are found and in these nodules uh, a specific bacteria is living that uh, that is known as rhizobium rhizobium bacteria will absorb the um, atmospheric nitrogen it will convert into nitrogenous compounds and uh, um, transfer it into it into the soil and from the soil the plant will absorb these nitrogenous compounds and they will fulfill their nitrogen requirement so this is a symbiotic mode of nutrition which is found in some plants to fulfill their the requirement of the nutrients now i'm going to start the last topic of this chapter that is replenishment of the nutrients in the soil as you know that uh, if uh, any crop is growing again and again in the soil um, there will be deficiency of some specific nutrients to fulfill it we use different methods for example we can provide manure or compost to the plants at the time of farming or uh, sometimes we can use the chemical fertilizers also so so both bio and chemical fertilizers are used to fulfill the requirement of the nutrients and uh, this is known as replenishment of the nutrients in the soil and another uh, um, example which uh, is found in nature is in leguminous plant it is done by rhizobium bacteria as already i have discussed it with you so this is all thank you